Hi pals, welcome back to my channel. So let's have a chat about something that can massively affect your self-love and your self-esteem and that is saying no to things that don't serve you and knowing how and when to say no. It's so important as well to say that it is not selfish to say no and not want to do something that someone's asking you to do. I heard this really cool quote that I don't know who it's from, I will find it and put it on the screen for you. Self-care is putting your needs over someone else's want and being selfish is putting your wants over someone else's needs. So this is what you're doing if you're saying no to something that you just don't wanna do. You're putting your needs over someone else's wants. Someone else wants you to do this thing and you need to not do this thing. So that is not selfish. So first I think it's important to look at the reasons why you find it hard to say no. Then we'll talk about some situations you should say no to and when you should say no. And then we'll talk about how to say no and things you can put in place to make it easier for yourself to say no to things that you don't wanna do. So saying no is hard for quite a lot of people, but especially hard for people pleasers. And I definitely fall into this category I couldn't bear getting into trouble at school, I couldn't bear being told off by teachers or being told that I was naughty or I'd done something wrong. So I've definitely developed this kind of want to please everyone and make everyone else happy and then I won't be in trouble. So if you look right right back to your childhood, one of the reasons this trait might have come about is from wanting to please your parents which made a lot of sense when you were a baby a child because you literally depended on them for survival so if they were angry at you or disappointed in you then they might cast you out and you would not survive so in a kind of primal way it did make sense for us to want to please our parents it also comes from not wanting to hurt the people that we care about so not wanting to be the bringer of bad news to put someone that we care about into a negative mood so this could either be a again with family or like with your social group at school maybe you didn't want to be the bringer of bad news to a group because you didn't want to be associated with that bad news because you wanted to fit in and people to like you another big reason you might not want to say no is FOMO fear of missing out always feeling that the grass is greener on the other side the other people are having way more fun and you don't want to miss out on all the fun they're having and finally you might feel like you owe someone a favor so you have to say yes to whatever they're asking for because you owe them one so it's important to kind of look at those origins and look at yourself and maybe have like a journaling session where you think about why you find it hard to say no so that you can address those deeper issues rather than just on the surface learning some tricks to say no. So when should you say no? I found this really handy flowchart in the book An Edited Life by Anna Newton which I will put on the screen for you to see and you can screenshot and use this when you're thinking should I say no to this thing so it basically comes down to do you want to do the thing do you have the money to do the thing do you have time to do the thing and will you get some kind of reward for doing the thing whether that's they owe you a favor or you will get some benefit from this thing at all obviously this is super vague and absolutely depends on the thing that you're figuring out whether to say no to whether that's like going to a party or going to an event or if someone is asking you to do something, it very much depends. But this flowchart is very helpful just to find a baseline of whether you should say yes or no to this thing. However, this isn't completely foolproof because sometimes it is good to get out of your comfort zone. Say you've just moved to a new city and your colleague is inviting you out for a party and you don't wanna go and you can't really afford to go and you can't really be bothered, but it is good in that situation to push yourself out of your comfort zone to make new friends, even though you might not really wanna go. Because if you say no to something the first time someone asks, it's unlikely that they'll ask you again. So maybe if it's going out for lunch with your new colleagues, say yes to that one. So you've got something coming up, maybe it's an event or a birthday party, you've looked at your origins of why you are a people pleaser and you've gone through this flow chart and worked out that you just really don't wanna to go to this and you can't afford it and you don't have the time for it. So you're gonna say no. How on earth do you do this? One way that you can do this and it kind of sets you up for saying no in the future to things you don't want to do is to make yourself some personal policies. And I shared a video yesterday that will be in the month of self-love playlist from Michelle B, which explains more about setting these personal policies and about them, but I'll tell you about them briefly now. It's basically giving yourself a set of rules that you just don't break. We're people pleasers, so we're likely to also not be rule breakers. But these are personal rules that you abide by. And if someone is asking you to do something that conflicts with these rules, then you just say no. So for example, a personal policy of mine is that I don't wanna go into any city center on a weekend. So if someone is asking me to meet them for a coffee in the city center on a Saturday, 
I'll say no, maybe we can meet somewhere else or do it on a different day. And this makes it easier to say no because you're kind of putting it external. Like it's not my fault that I wanna say no, it's my personal policy and I have to abide by those rules. When you do say no, don't be so apologetic. Explain the reasons if you have to, explain that you can't afford it or you don't have time or you just don't want to. But being really apologetic for saying no makes you look like the bad guy and makes you look like a letdown. So just say, I can't come to that, here's my reason. The temptation might be, instead of giving a definitive answer, to just say, uh, maybe, oh, I'll think about it, oh, I'll have a look at my diary. If you say maybe, people will take that as a yes. And then when you do say no later, you'll be even more of a letdown. So if you know that you are gonna say no to this, then say no and just be decisive. People will appreciate more if you're decisive than if you're a flake. If the reason that you hate to say no to things was FOMO, then make sure whatever it is you're doing instead is super fun and you're really enjoying it and you're really grateful and present for it. So you might be thinking, oh, I bet they're having a really good time at that party. I should have gone to it. But while you're thinking about this, you're not enjoying the thing that you're doing. So stop thinking about the thing that everyone else is doing. You've said no to it, so put it out of your mind and enjoy what you're doing instead. A way to make this a bit easier is to think about how you'd feel after the party rather than just how you'd feel while you were there. So think, yeah, it would have been a good party, but coming back, I would have been really hungover. I would have been really tired. And now because I've had my night in, I'm gonna feel well rested and really productive tomorrow. And finally, similar to personal policies is to set yourself a free night quota. So this could be one or two nights a week, however best fits into your schedule, where you don't make plans with anyone. And if someone tries to make plans with you on that night, you can just say no because you're already busy with your free night. That's a great one for if you're like me and you just think that you can do everything and just say yes to everything and end up overworking yourself and getting burnout. Saying no to things is definitely a skill to be worked on. It's not something that you can fix overnight, but just think to yourself, if you're saying no to all these things that you don't want to do, you're freeing up time for the things that you really do want to do. So in the end, you'll live a happier life and you'll love yourself more for it. I really hope you found these tips useful and you've enjoyed this video. And I really hope you're enjoying this series so far. Let me know in the comments. I feel like we need like a symbol or something to communicate with each other by. Like, the purple love heart emoji is my emoji. So if you're watching these videos all the way through and you're really excited for these series, leave me a purple love heart emoji. Or if you've just stumbled across this one video and you're just gonna watch this one video and you've enjoyed it, leave me an orange love heart emoji. I just thought it'd be really interesting to see. Don't forget to have a look at the Self Love Month playlist. I'm uploading a new video every other day in February all about self love. And on the alternating days, I'll be sharing a video that I've made or someone else has made that relates to self love as well. So there's some really exciting stuff going on in there, so have a look. And make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss when I put out these videos, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!